welcome everyone here in Pensacola at Gulf Breeze. Let's show some love to Gulf Breeze. We're glad you guys came. Yeah, man. So glad that y'all are here. And Navarre, let's give it up for Navarre. Navarre, we're glad you showed up today. So glad. How about Blackwater? Blackwater, all the men. Are you kidding me? You know that last Sunday night, every Sunday night, we go to Blackwater Correctional Facility. And uh, God has been doing amazing, mind-blowing things in Blackwater. He really has. Um, this week, uh, I mean, last Sunday night, let's just go there for a minute. Last Sunday night, we had 12 men give their life to Jesus. 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 at Blackwater. Yes, we celebrate that. That's the deal, man. That's bigger than any World Series, any Super Bowl. That's the deal. I'm so excited about that. Thank you, guys. And then, you know, we have people watching online. Even on the way here, my son and I, Gavin, had a basketball game, and we went through the drive through and uh, went to Wendy's. And uh, so he went to Wendy's. I didn't eat no Wendy's, but Gavin did. I'm fasting. I'm like, Gavin, why aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Gavin over there, he's like, Daddy, can I, not just a four piece, let me get another four piece and a fry and a frosty, <laughs> you know. And uh, it's raining, so you know what that means? The windows are up, the windows are up, and the smell is inside. And I started on the first, man. I started on the first, so I'm kind of like in it. You know, what is today? Day 11, 11th of January. So yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> I was hangry this week. You ever been hangry? You know what hangry is? Hangry is when you're hungry and you're angry. That's what happens. You're hangry, man. You can be, the devil can be inside. You just take coffee away from a coffee drinker or I'm telling you, I don't know, Chick-fil-A. I don't know what it is. But, but this week, man, um, telling this to our online crowd, as we, we pulled up today, we pulled up in the drive through ordered that food for Gavin. And the lady at the window said, where you been, Pastor Tim? She said, you've been cheating on Wendy's? She said, I haven't seen you. You know, Wendy's is Gavin's favorite. And uh, I said, no, I've been cheating on everybody lately. And, uh, but uh, we had fun, man. And she said, you know, I work a lot of weekends, and so I don't get to come. Uh, when I do come, I can come, I come. But when I can't, I watch you online. And I just thought, you know what, thank God for online campus where people are able locally and globally to see what God is doing. And I'm thankful the truth is, guys, honestly, there are people all over in different states, in different countries, that Momentum Church is their home. And uh, we may never meet them till heaven. Won't that be cool? But uh, when, when we're singing, y'all don't know this because most of y'all never been to Blackwater. But Blackwater has a screen, and they watch our band on the screen. People sometimes, Pastor Tim, you're just not alive at this campus. You're not just present, you know. And I'm like, it's not about me. It's that simple. And we have technology, and I don't want it to be about me. That would be way, way too small what God wants to do. But, but every week, men go out, and they'll stand in the rain and come in soaking wet to hear the message on a TV and to watch and sing the worship. And these men, when they sing, they sing. They sing out, and it's a TV in a big room. And so I just, I'm thankful for all of our campuses. So thankful for all of our campuses. Well, don't raise your hand if you've been fasting. But if you have been fasting, um, I just want to say, you know, when we fast, we, um, when we fast and pray, God makes a way. And when you fast, and it is, there's so many different ways to fast. Go online on MomentumChurch.org, I think, slash fast. We have a bunch of resources. Is that right, Matt? Slash is it fasting slash fasting? Resources right there that will really help you. But when you, when you fast, don't just deny yourself of whatever. Make time for God. Make time to pray. And when you do that, I promise you, you'll see God move mountains that you haven't seen moved in forever. And so I just wanted to kick off the message with that intro and tell you that this week I went hunting, went pig hunting. And I was coming back, and I was hungry, man. I was so hungry. And the devil was tempting me. The devil was tempting me. The devil was like, oh, now, you know you're going to pass this and this and this. And I'm doing a certain type of fast. And uh, all that stuff was not on, on, on what I'm supposed to be doing. But I really felt tempted. More than I remember in eight years 
since we started the church. Dev was like, man, you could go to this restaurant. You could do this. And he was trying to talk me out of what I committed to God. And, uh, you know, he did the same thing to Jesus. And, um, but Jesus used the word of God to combat the devil. And the word of God is how you resist the devil. And when you resist the devil with the word of God, the devil has to flee. So he has to flee. And so I'm thankful. I'm telling you, man. But I had thoughts in my head like, just go to McDonald's. Just pull in the drive through Just go to Chick-fil-A. No one will know. Just go in there and get, a, get an extra large fry. You know what I'm saying? All those thoughts were. And I'm telling you, I was like, <laughs> you know, that's not a bad idea. I mean, it was a real battle. And so I just want to say, I'm like you. When we fast, man, the devil tries to talk us out of our blessing. But for such a time as this. This is such a small sacrifice at the beginning of the year for what God wants to do for the rest of the year. And when we give God the first, you hear me preach this about finances, but I believe it's true about your year. I believe it's true about your day. I believe it's true about your week. When we give the first to God, God redeems the rest. And he makes the rest the best. And so I'm just thankful for that. And so if you're out there and you've been struggling, I just want to raise my hand and say, me too. And uh, just say you're not the only one, and uh, we, we, we're in this thing together. But there's power of worshiping God together. And there's power of doing a, a, a fast alone. But when we fast together, you know what happens? Um, there's, there's a community. It's kind of like the redwoods. And I believe the roots go down, and the roots tie on to each other. And so a tree is stronger because the roots underneath the ground are actually the roots of those all around. And so when we do something corporately as a church, there's crazy, awesome power in doing something corporately. It's why we come to church. It's why we do that. We go worship God at the house. You should do that. But God says don't neglect coming together because we need each other. We need each other. Turn to someone and say, we need each other. That was some of y'all's moment, man, right there. That was some of y'all's moment. Last week, last week, we talked about the power of a decade. And we said that the power of a decade is a disciplined day over time. And this weekend, we're launching a brand new series that is so connected to that message. But this series is called Stronger. And I don't know about you, I want to be stronger. Anyone in here want to be stronger this year than you were last year? Go ahead and raise your hand. Anyone want to be stronger? I want to be stronger in so many different areas. I want to be stronger in my body. I want to be stronger in my mind. And I want to be stronger in my soul. Like who I am. I want to be stronger. And so we're going we're gonna to have fun over this series. I hope you'll come. I hope you will be faithful every week. I hope that you will be in God's house. I hope you'll be ready to take notes, get out your phone. I know sometimes in the schools, I want to say for Navarre and Gulf Breeze, sometimes you try to hop on version where the notes are there. My notes are there. And you can follow along, click save, and, and take that with you. If you think I don't need it today, you might need it tomorrow. But sometimes in the school, there's not good service, good reception, Wi-Fi, and all that stuff. And I recognize that. But that's a good reason to take notes. Get your phone out, man. Bring a pen. Be hungry, man. This is the Word of God. It's really the Word of God. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. So let's jump into it. And I simply want to ask you this question. Are you a body worshiper or a body neglecter? Because normally we fall on one side or the other. I've heard, uh, and I've, I've heard people say, well, I'm just not into fitness. And I've heard other people like, i got to go to the gym. It's been five minutes since I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Are you a body worshiper or are you a body neglector? The truth is every one of us, we, we laughing because we already know, right? We fit in one of two of those categories. And if we're a body worshiper, then we're all about everything. I mean, I'm telling you, if you're a body worshiper, then you know. And you know the truth about discipline, a disciplined day over time, and you got great habits, but sometimes body worshipers just aren't fun to be around. You know what I'm talking about? They're like so laser focused that they can never have a bite of cake. You know, but it's your, you know, it's your son's birthday. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? And it's like there's almost a fear there. You know what I'm saying? That like a little sugar. They're going to poof, 
<laughs> but and they and, and I'm not talking about like just once. They, they're like, no, 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 no. I'm not even talking about discipline. I'm just saying where they can't even enjoy, right? I heard someone once say, man, it's not what you eat between Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's really what you eat between Christmas and Thanksgiving. Just think about that. Oftentimes we put guilt on ourselves. We go, oh, there's the holidays and I'm, I'm eating all this stuff. And I get that. We probably shouldn't go all out, you know. But, uh, but really it's about that discipline, right, from Thanksgiving to the, the following Chris, Christmas. But, but if you're a body worshiper, you're constantly thinking about yourself, how you look, my appearance, my appearance, my appearance. If you're a body worshiper, if we're not careful, if we're a body worshiper, it can become about us. And, and there's danger in that. On the other hand, if you're my body neglector, you just a party waiting to happen. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? You like, you get all the sugar cereal, all the stuff, and you're like, that's just not my gig, man. That's really not me. And somewhere in the middle, I think somewhere in the middle, God wants us to be. Did you know that God talks about your body? Anyone ever said something about your body? We, we get sensitive when someone talks about our bodies, don't we? Someone, someone does that, we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. But has everyone ever complimented you? Everyone ever, anybody ever complimented you? Like, man, I can tell a difference, man. And what does it do? It feels good, doesn't it? Nothing wrong with that. It's like, yeah, and that's kind of fuel for the journey. On the other hand, sometimes if we just totally neglect it, um, we can just feel bad about ourselves. And when we feel bad about ourselves and maybe even how we look, the appearance, one worships, worships it, the other neglects it, we can feel so bad about how we look that we give up. And we think, I'm always going to look this way. I'm always going to be 60 pounds overweight. I'm always going to have a belly. I'm always going to whatever you put it in there. And, and my goal for this series is to be very helpful to all of us and to say, hey, let's look at what God says about our body, mind, and our soul. So let's jump into the scriptures real quick. First thing I want you to know is this, is that God wants you to understand that our bodies were created by God. Someone say by God. Our bodies were created by God. And our text for the series is going to be Romans 12, 1 and 2. And Paul... Um, you know, he's, he's laying down some, some powerful words here, and, and, and we're just going to read verse 1 today. We're just going to look at that, but, but verse 1, he's, he's connecting with us, and he uses this word plead. I plead you. I beg you. Some translations um, that are uh, word-for-word -word translations say the word beseech. This is, like, this is like the desire in your heart, guys, before you proposed to your woman, and you're like, you are hoping that she's going to say yes. You just want her to say yes. Paul, in pinning these words through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's feeling the same thing inside, the same desire that you and I would listen to what is being said and we would respond with a yes. So with that in mind, in that context, let's read the verse. Romans 12, 1, I'm going to read from the NLT. And so, dear brethren... Or brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies. Someone say your bodies. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Your bodies. To give your bodies to God. We're to, we're to give our bodies to God. And why are we to do that? Why? Because, here's the why. You know, you tell your kids to do something, often they want to know why, don't they? Why? Well, why did I, I got to do that? Why can't I do that? Why can't I be on my phone? Why do I got to turn the volume down? Why do I got to get on it? I've only been on it 31 hours. You know, why, why, why? He gives us the why because of all he has done for you. So because of everything Jesus has done for me, in return, I'm to, watch this, dedicate my body. I'm to give my body back to him. Let them be a living and a holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. See, worship just isn't about how we sing and our comfort levels of how we sing and raise our hand or whatever we do. And people are at different ends of the spectrum there. And that's awesome. That's worship. But I love this verse that says, hey, this, right, this is truly the way to worship him. How? How's truly the way to worship him? For us to give our bodies to God because of everything he's done for us. Does that make sense? 
It's kind of like the fact that if you went to Wendy's and bought food and um, you asked your child for a fry and they didn't want to give you a fry, but you just paid $61 for the family to go to Wendy's, are you with me? You'd have an issue with that. Because of, uh, what? Because all I've done for you, and you, you see what I'm saying? And, and so God, God is saying the same thing here. Hey, and, and Paul really is the one pinned the words, and he's saying this. He's saying this to us even today in 2020. Listen, everything that God's gone through for us, it's, it's really small that you and I would um, sign up for his service. And when you sign up to go to the service, your bodies change. You ever watch someone comes home six weeks later after they went to the service? Chin's a little more chiseled, chest is a little more there. They look a little bit better, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit different. The hair looks a little bit different. They had long hair, they don't have long hair anymore. There's a difference. Why? Because they went into the service. Right? If you played for the Yankees, yo, I don't know, you played for the Yankees, you had to shave, no facial hair. And so you watch these guys that would go to the Yankees and they had these gnarly beards, man, that were awesome. But if you're going to come to the Yankees and play for the Yankees, you just shaved. You had to have a clean face. And that was just how they, and, and so God, God is saying this, listen, listen, I created your body. In fact, let's look at what David, the psalmist said. Let's go to Psalm 139. We're going to read verse 13 through 16, and some of you, for some of you, this is gonna be such an awesome thought that you've never really realized. If you've never embraced this, if you've never internalized this, today's the day because David is gonna unpack the fact that God created me, that you're not an accident. Like you might have been an accident for your parents. Maybe, maybe you were more than just an accident Maybe you're, you are inconvenient. And the truth is, we just press the envelope a little far here. It would be a very emotional time because of your story and how your story started. But if I could just look in your eyes and tell you that you were created by God, that God made you. And you are not an accident in heaven. You are not an accident. David says this, verse 13, and he's speaking to God. He says, you made all of the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. That's why unapologetically, I'm against abortion. And people, um, I want you to understand, we've all messed up. We've all messed up. Maybe you're on the side where you were young and you had an abortion. And God doesn't want you to struggle with guilt. God wants to take that guilt away. Guilt is never from God. Conviction is from God, but guilt is never from God. God doesn't take our face and stick it in our sin and rub it around. That's, that's what the devil does. He takes our face in our mess and he sticks it in there and he, yeah, 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 look at that. That's what the devil does. That's what guilt looks like. Conviction's not. God's like, don't, don't, don't. That's conviction. But then I'm thankful for God's mercy. But I do want to, uh, I don't want to skirt the issue either because I believe um, that righteousness exalts a nation. We were made by God. God made all the delicate inner parts of my body. So creation doesn't start when we come out of the womb. Creation starts when God starts it in the body. And I believe unapologetically that the other is, is not from God, that God doesn't want that. And so I think that a great thing for us to do would be to pray, to pray. Because our country has turned to a point where, man, you, you know, it's just ludicrous. And I think it hurts the heart of God. And if you're out there and you're thinking about having an abortion, listen, please don't. Please don't. Because there are people who are praying for a baby. And you might not be able to, and there's no judgment here. You might, they're, they're crazy circumstances, but put that baby up for adoption. Let someone else love on that child. 
Because that child was God's idea. You made all the delicate inward parts of my body and you knit, knit, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. For some of us, we need to get our, rid of our complex and realize that he made us so wonderfully complex. And we have a complex because, well, I'm this or I'm this or God made me that way or I don't like my nose or I don't like this or I don't like that or I wish I had more hair or this or that or I wish I was taller or shorter. You know, and isn't it funny how sometimes we just, we just, honestly, we just don't like so much about our bodies. Sometimes people with hair shave the head. People with no hair, you know, wear a toupee. With no, it's, it's like, if I could be like that, people that are white, they want to go to the tanning booth. I've been, I've been over in China where people are like, we don't want to, and, and they, and God says, man, no, I put you together. I made you. I created you. Do, do you understand that God doesn't make trash? That God never says oops, that you're not an accident, that God formed you in your mother's womb, that God was involved in everything about you as much as my daughter on her iPad today during Gavin's basketball game was a coloring on the iPad and she's an artist and she's doing all of this. As much as she was doing that and picking, God did that to you. God said, I want this nose. I'm going to make them this way. I'm going to give them this personality. And for some of us, we've rejected ourselves when God loves exactly how he made you. I hope that helps somebody. Thank you. When was the last time you told God, thank you for making you the way he made you? Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Here it is. This can help some worry warts right here. If you worry, you know, sometimes we tend to worry. If you worry, listen to this next phrase. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Literally, I am his special creation. You are his special creation. And so much so that God already laid every moment out so, so we don't have to be afraid. When we're getting ready to step into a moment that we're a little nervous about, God already planned it and he actually already laid out that moment. And God's got it. He's got the whole, world's in, the whole world in his hands. He's got the universe in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got my, he got my Rottweiler in his hands. He's got the, you remember that song? He's got the whole world in his hands. And so I don't, gotta, I don't have to do that. I can relax because I know that God loves me so much. He, he created me exactly how he wanted me to be and God already laid out my moments of my days. I love that. God created me, number one. Number two, God created me to love me. God created you to love you. Do you know that? Some of you are wondering, why am I here? Some of you are wondering, like, my life, this isn't at all what I want. And maybe you're here, and you're like, you know what, I just soon end it. Because none of this makes sense. And I'm struggling with this, or I'm struggling with that, or this is happening, that is happening. And it feels like everything around me is out of control. And if that's where you're at today, I want to tell you something. God not only created you, God created you to love you. And if we could only understand how much God loves us. The enemy wants you to think that God doesn't love you. The enemy wants you to think that God is so angry at you, man, that God, God is just, you know, God is just waiting to just totally just let you have it because you messed up. Let you have it because you screwed up. And I want to tell you something. Listen, there's, there is that God is a God of, of grace and God is a God of truth. But, you know, the truth is the reason why Jesus went to the cross is because God said, I love you too much to experience heaven without you, so I'll give my boy. And they'll do all kinds of crazy, hurtful, harmful things to him, including spitting in the face of the creator. And I'll allow it to happen. I'll allow him to be nailed to a cross. I'll allow them to strip him and beat him and mock him and ridicule him. 
And you know why he allowed that to happen? It wasn't just to pay for your sin. It was because he loved you. Love was his motivation to go to the cross. So whenever the devil is telling you that God doesn't love you, all you got to do is remember the cross. He not only created me, God created me to love me. Look at what Ephesians 1.4 says. Uh, verses will be on the screen. I'm reading this from the message. This is a paraphrase. I love this. Long before he, that's God, laid down the earth's foundation, God had us in his mind. Ladies, when your husband's thinking about you and he comes home and he did something special for you and it's not your anniversary, it's not your birthday, you know, he isn't in trouble. He didn't do something that he, he trying to get out of the doghouse for. When he just does something, doesn't it make you feel special? Guys, when your wife's thinking about you, maybe your boyfriend, your girlfriend, they do something. When your parents do something for you, or parents, how about this, when our kids do something for us. We're like, oh, Jesus, I'm coming home, Right? But they do, right? Why? Because they were thinking about us. And oftentimes, right, it's not even so much about the gift as it is what? As it is the thought that goes into that gift. He was thinking about us. For he even made the earth. He had us in mind. He settled on us as the focus of his love. You're the focus of God's love. You are the focus of God's love. To be made whole and holy by his love. So I just want to ask that question again. Have, have you taken the time to thank God for how he made you? How he created you? Colossians 1.16 says, For everything, absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. That's why it's so important that you, number one, know Jesus, and that you, number two, follow Jesus. Because if you don't know Jesus, you'll never know your purpose. If you give Jesus your life, but you never follow Jesus, you'll never know your purpose. And there's something about when you and I realize who we are in Christ and who, who, who we are and what our purpose is. I read the other day a book that I gave to someone. I was reminded of how they came back to me and they told me, they said, Tim, when you invited me to serve God, everything changed. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I, I, didn't think I could. I didn't think I should. I didn't think anyone probably thought I could or I should. And the truth is, when I started serving God, I realized, wait a second, there was something inside of me that came alive. All of a sudden, this passion I never knew that I had came out, and I realized this is why I was created. In Isaiah 44, 2, in the CEV, God says, I am your creator. You were in my care even before you were born. God not only created you, God created you to love you. Our bodies were created, number one, by God. Number two, our bodies were created for God. They were created by God, and they were created for God. In other words, God cares about your body. God cares about my body. 1 Corinthians, Paul, he's writing to this church, and this church is like crazy. If you don't know, the church at Corinth, some crazy stuff was going on. And Paul was having to get on them, like, what in the world is happening here? And you'll read... In First and Second Corinthians, and, and you'll read how, how Paul at times, he speaks very directly to the church because of where they were. Sex was rampant in this church. But back then, sex was rampant in the temples of the gods. If you know anything about Greek and the Greek mythology and anything about what was happening in the temples back then, it was crazy. And people would literally go to the temple or they would go to church and they would pay for prostitutes to sleep with them. It, it was just wicked. And that wicked culture had started to be gone to influence the church. And so in the church, people that were married started sleeping with other people that were married. And people over here that, that were getting ready to be married were cheating on their 
person of interest over here and you had all, and it was just like spaghetti. It was all tangled up. In fact, at one point, Paul addresses the church for one man who was sleeping with his mother-in-law. And so that's really the context of the chapter that we're going to read in 1 Corinthians 6. And he's going to talk about our bodies. So let's jump into it real quick. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 20. You say, I'm allowed to do anything. In other words, Jesus set me free. I'm a Christian. I got grace. I can do whatever I want. But notice what he says. But not everything is good for you. And even though, now Paul is saying this. Paul is saying, as the one who is going around and starting these churches, Paul was saying, I'm allowed to do anything. But even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. That's kind of what we talked about last week. Remember that? Nothing wrong with sweets unless sweets own you. Right? There's nothing wrong. But, but if something owns me, if something controls me other than the Spirit of God, then something's out of line. My spiritual alignment. I went to the chiropractor this week. And as I was walking out, I said, I said, Doc, I said, Dr. Likens, I said, would you tell me, man, which side of my neck was out for two months out here for two weeks hurting here? And he said, Tim, they, it was all whacked up. It was all crazy out. I said, well, that explains it. I think, think sometimes in life, you know, we have these like spiritual subluxations where we just get out of alignment with God. And then we wonder why things are off. And God's saying, hey, just trust me, man. Just let's, let's just come back into alignment. You know, as soon as I got adjusted, I felt better. As soon as I got adjusted, I'll walk out. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I feel like normal. I feel better. So Paul says, yeah, so I'm allowed to do anything, but I'm, I must not become a slave to anything. He says, you say food was made for the stomach and the stomach for Food, <laughs> this is true, but though someday God will do away with both of them. But, but you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord. And the Lord cares about our bodies. When you watch football sometimes, you watch a, a game and then at the end of the game they give the glory to God. Um, that's the next point. But then in it they say, I just want to thank God who, who gave me the ability they're saying, I want to thank God for the body to be able to do this. So your bodies, our bodies were made for the Lord and the Lord cares about our bodies and God will raise us up from the dead by his power just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Really great. Verse 15, don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is a part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if, if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her. For the scriptures say the two are united into one, speaking of marriage, speaking of sex. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Here it is, verse 18, run from sexual sin. Can I just say in a day and age where our culture just says, do whatever, do whatever you want. It's all good. It's about you. You know, just do what, you, what makes you feel happy. That that actually is the way that may be fun for a season, but that sin will lead to a really bad end. So Paul says, same guy who's in Romans saying, I plead with you, give your bodies to God for all he's done to you or done for you. Now he's saying, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price, right? Like the price of something is determined on what someone's willing to pay. If you go to an auction, you go to auction, the value of that is actually determined in how much someone is willing to pay for that. Steph and I got to go um, to uh, 
incredible event for the Pensacola Dream Center uh, just a month or two ago and just love what God's doing through that. But they had the silent auction and then they had the non-silent auction and there are a couple guys going back and forth and we all loved it. It was great. It was for a great cause. And they're going back and forth and, and the truth is what they were paying for, what they were getting, they were paying way more, right? They're paying way, 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 way more money but that's kind of the point, right? Because we're trying to raise money to do good. Are you with me? That's the point. That's what we're trying to to accomplish and so but whatever that last what it went for that final bid going once going twice and the the guy was excited he's excited to pay for that because he wanted that and he was willing to pay for that why because he believed in it and so God believes so much in you because he created you and he created you to love you God believed so much in all of us that God paid the ultimate price that was the blood of Jesus. That was the price to be paid for us. And so he says, hey, 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 watch this. Listen, listen, listen. You don't belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price. So you must, someone say must. He's talking believers and he's not negotiating. He's not giving an inch. Paul's really kind of bringing some straight talk before straight talk existed. He's really saying, listen, listen, listen. No, 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 you must honor God with your body. Lastly, number three, our bodies were created to glorify God. So our bodies were made by God. They were made for God. And they were made, our bodies, created, literally, to glorify God. One more verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, <laughs> whether you eat, whether you drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. See, our, God, our bodies were created by God, for God, to honor God. Do you know that about your body? That your body was created by God, for God, to bring honor and glory to God. Really, the, the takeaway of this message is this. God cares about what he creates. And I'm thankful for that because I'm one of his creations. And you should be thankful for that because you are too. God cares about what he creates. My question for you in closing is, is will you enlist your body for God's glory? Will you do that? Will you say, you know what? Like, man, I'm, I'm gonna enlist and, and I'm willing to change some things. And I'm going to watch, because when you enlist in the military, you come under authority. You don't argue with them about the haircut. You don't argue with them about why you got to get up at such and such time and do push-ups in the mud. No, no, you're under authority. And I just believe a whole bunch of us at the beginning of the year, if you really want to get stronger, if you want to be stronger, I think um, we can't compartmentalize well, this is my life and then this is God. We've tried that for too long, haven't we? Hadn't really worked out that well. What if we just said, okay, God, it's all you. My body, my mind, my soul. And, and if you just tried it, you know what would happen? You just say, God, here, here I am. It's just me, Tim. And uh, you say, it's just, it's just me. I, I give you my ears. I'm not going to listen to things that are going to hurt me. I'm not going to listen to people gossiping and being negative about other people. If people run, if you're like, I don't know why people run to me. Pastor, they just run to me and tell me. They just talk to me about all kinds of people. A couple things I want you to understand. Show teeth. Number one, they're talking about you. Number two, they're going to you because they know you'll let them dump their trash on you. They know that you're a garbage collector. Well, I just don't know what to say. No, no, no. Just say, just say, you know what? I'm not filling my ears with trash. Say, you know what? Just, I'm sorry. Listen, but if you don't have something nice to say about them, this would change the way some of us throw up on Facebook because of the anger we have towards people and some people in politics. This would change a whole lot if God's, just God's people. If just God's people said, you know what, I'm just going to be careful little ears what you hear. Be careful little ears what you hear. For the Father up above 
is looking down in love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. Do you struggle there? Do you struggle? Do you struggle with that tongue? I mean, Scripture says, who can tame that? I mean, we tame tigers, baby. Ain't no one taming the tongue. If you tamed your tongue, come, I want to meet you. Please sign my Bible today. This thing can get away. In, in church, I can sing to God, and then I can go out, and it can just it can get away from me. You guys? Some of y'all are looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Why are you looking so spiritual? Be careful, little mouth, what you say. In fact, James, I'm getting ready to close, but James says that every problem that we have in our life, the beginning, the genesis, the start is this, the tongue. Every issue in your life and in my life goes back to my tongue. So be careful, little mouth, what you say. Hands. My hands were made to glorify God. That's why the psalmist said, in your sanctuary, I will lift my hands. When I pray, I will lift my hands to you. At midnight, David said, I will raise my hands in prayer to you. I'm not saying you got to do that every midnight, but just try it one time. I'm not saying you got to raise your hand every time in a song, but just try it one time. Just saying, God, I'm, I'm here, and I'm angry, or I'm disconnected, or I'm frustrated, or I'm, I'm, I'm hopeless, or I'm whatever, and, and, and here I am, and I'm calling out for you. Like, I, here I am. Your hands. Right now during fasting, we're remember, remembering about our stomachs. It was King's stomach that got Adam and Eve kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Had they not disobeyed, we'd still be in there. We'd still be in there. But King's stomach took over. What about our feet? What about where we go? God gave us feet. And in fact, we, we're to move forward with our feet. We're to love people with our hands. We're to see and say, God, help me to see what you see. We're to think, we're to, we're to watch what we think about and make sure that we capture every thought. If a thought comes into your mind, if it comes into your mind and it's not a God, it ain't a God. If it doesn't align with what God wants, his will, his work, his way, it was from the enemy. But you gotta get that thing out or it will stay there. We've all heard people who did crazy things and they're like, I had a voice in my head, I heard a voice in my head, I, I heard it, so I did it. That's the devil. Don't listen to the devil. So is our bodies. What if, church, what if, what if, dream with me, dream, 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 dream with me. What if all of us just said, you know what, God, this new year, I'm going to give you my body. I'm just going to realize that because I'm a Christian and the Holy Spirit lives in me, that my body belongs to the Lord. It, it was created by him and for him and to bring glory to him. And so, you know what, God, I give you my body. My body's yours, use it. That means that my mouth might go from being negative to being positive. I love that. I love that. That means that, you know what, I pray for boldness, holy boldness to use this thing instead of being negative or to gossip or to criticize or to critique or to complain or to have an offense or to dump on people to do that. Instead of that, I would use this thing to, to love people. I would use this thing for healing, not hurt. I would use this thing for peace, not war. I would use this thing, right? I would use this thing to tell people about the love of God. What if, what if we just realized that all of this was made by him, for him, and for his glory? Then you know what happened? What happened is, um, kind of like we watched the, cha the championship, right? It's coming on Monday night. We're going to watch Monday night. We're going to watch LSU play uh, Clemson, the Tigers against the Tigers. We're going to watch this. Some of us going to watch that game. You know what? At the very end, someone's going to hold up a trophy. Someone's going to be a winner. The other team's going to be a loser. And a whole lot's going into all that. At the end of our lives, if we live for God, we're going to be given a trophy. But you know what we'll do with that trophy? We'll give it back to God. Because we'll say, that was Christ in me. What about if you just dedicated your mind? Where could your business grow and go? If you dedicated your businesses to God, 
Say, God, I'm going to leverage my body, my thinking, my strategy, all of that for your glory. You know what happened? One day, you look back and say, I'm so glad that I did. Instead of looking back with regret and saying, I wish I had. If you're here today and you just don't love yourself, you don't love the way you look, you never had. In sixth grade, someone said something. In eighth grade, someone did something. And you just said, you know what? God wants you to know, I made you. And I made you to love you. That's an awesome God. Would you bow your heads and would you close your eyes real quick? How many would say, you'd say, Pastor Tim, you know what? I just, I want to do that. I just want to dedicate my body to God. Maybe, maybe some of us, and the truth is probably most of us, we've gotten off the tracks. We kind of messed up in there, that area. And you'd say, Pastor Tim, the truth is I, uh, I need to get back on track. For some of us, just say, I just, right now in this moment, you say, God, I, I, just, I just dedicate my body back to you. No matter what happened in the past, that's the past. Can't change the past. Don't live in the past. Can't move forward looking in the past. You say, I, right now, God, I just give my body to you. I dedicate my body for all you've done. I dedicate these hands, these eyes, these ears, the brain that you gave me, my tongue, my feet. Just dedicate. I want to give my body to you, God, for your purpose, for your glory. If that's you, would you raise your hand all over? Oh, you just hold it up high, man. So many hands. Holy cow. I love that. Think about the potential of that. Who else? That's right. Keep them up. Keep them up. I want to pray for you. Keep them up. All over the house. In Gulf Breeze, keep them up. All over. In Navarre, keep them up. For some of you, you're athletes. And God gave you that ability, but use that for God's glory. Would you keep your hands up? And as you keep your hands up, to God, I just want to pray for you. I'm going to lift my hands up and pray over you. I pray, God, right now for every one who has raised their hand to say, God, I want to give you my body for your glory, my mind, Lord, um, as part of my body, my, my hands and my feet, and God, my, my lips, my tongue, my feet. God, just realize that, Holy Spirit, that, that this is your temple. And so because it's your temple, I don't want to be a body worshiper, and I don't want to be a body neglector. Lord, I just want to realize that it's uh, from you, and it's, it's actually for you, and it's actually back to you in Jesus' name. And you can put those hands down all over. And then before we close today, I never like to end a gathering without giving people an opportunity to put their faith and trust in Jesus. The gospel is clear. The gospel starts out that everything was good. God made everything awesome. And God warned us of something that would mess us up. But Adam and Eve, through disobedience, disobeyed and sin came into the world. And sin has passed from one generation to the next. And that sin nature is the reason why God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. That's why Jesus came. And Jesus lived a perfect life, and he died a perfect death. Even on the cross, when Jesus was being the most mistreated, any human has ever been mistreated. He did not sin with his mouth. Instead, he said, Father, forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing. And all the sin of the world, which means all of our sins, past, present, and future, were placed on Jesus. And Jesus paid in that moment for all the sins of the world, including yours and mine. And he canceled our sin debt. They buried him. Three days later, he rose again. Jesus is alive today. Jesus is coming back one day. And that's not a crazy myth or crazy belief or no, 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 no. That's, it's, it's, it's a mystery but it's not fantasy. Jesus died, was buried, and he rose again. And if you will put your faith in the fact that Jesus loved you, he loves you, he died for you, and he rose again for you, so that when you die, it's not over. If you'll put your faith and trust in what he did, not in what you've done, not in who you could become, but what Jesus did and what Jesus is, He's the Savior of the world. If you'll do that, Jesus 
will not only write your name in the Lamb's book of life, but Jesus will make you new and Jesus will teach you how to live. And having Jesus makes life better and makes us better at life. And I'm curious if there's any sinners today that Jesus is not your Savior, but today is the day of salvation. And if that is, this is your moment right here, right now. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. It's a prayer to God from our hearts to His. And God doesn't push us away. God receives every sinner who turns to Him, no matter what you've done. So in this moment right now, we pray to God. I want you to repeat after me. You're not going to pray through me to God. You're not going to pray to me. We're going to go all to God. I'm just going to lead us. I'm going to say, you repeat after me. But you're not talking to me. You're talking to God. And then at the end, I'm going to ask everyone that prayed it for the first time to raise your hand. We're going to celebrate. Today's your spiritual birthday. If you believe, you've been made new in Christ. So right now, let's do this together. Would you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I confess that Jesus, you are Lord. And I thank you for loving me. And I thank you for dying for me. I believe you rose again. And today, I'm asking you to come into my life. Make me new and teach me how to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone look up all over, every campus, look up. We love this part of the gathering. It's our favorite part because right now is when we get to see like who just got birthed into the kingdom of God and heaven is already celebrating and heaven is already, I mean, the angels are rejoicing in heaven and and it's amazing what's going on and we just kind of want to join in their celebration. You know, we just want to jump in. We just, they're already going way more than we could ever imagine, but we just kind of want to put out a little energy and just say, you're worth worth it because you were made by God. You were made for God. You're made for God's glory. And he saw you and he saved you and he made you new and he's going to teach you how to live right now. So on the count of three, if that was you today, right here in Pensacola, in Gulf Breeze, in Navarre, in Blackwater, or you're watching online, you type, Jesus made me new to let us know. At every other campus, I want you to raise your hand. Don't be shy. Hold it up high on the count of three. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Right now, hold it up. That's right. Hold it up. Hold it up. I see a hand. I see another hand right there. That's right. Hold it up. Who else? 